You welcome to this edition of the 6 p.m. primetime newscast on Equinox Television, live from my headquarters in Cameroon's economic capital, Douala. I am Babla Jonathan. In our top stories in this edition of the news, COVID 19 figures are on the rise in Anglophone Cameroon. The Northwest region has moved speedily from one to five confirmed cases of the COVID 19, while the Southwest region has already recorded at least 13 cases and nationwide at least. 56 persons have been killed by the COVID-19. Stay with us. The Republic of Cameroon is counting 220 COVID uh, as of 26th of April 2020, 103 new cases of COVID-19 with 83 of the cases recorded in the city of Douala and 20 in Cameroon's political capital, Yaoundé, according to Cameroon's Ministry of Public Health. Dr. Manauda uh, Malachi, the Minister of Public Health, in his uh, last uh, statements indicated uh, that uh, 779 cases of the COVID-19 are uh, active, 12 on oxygen and 118 hospitalized across the country and the minister for the seas, 56 persons have been killed by the COVID-19 in Cameroon and the COVID-19 figures are on a sharp rise in Anglophone Cameroon hit by socio-political and security crisis for close to four years today. The Northwest region has speedily moved from one to five COVID-19 cases over the weekend and the Southwest region has already recorded at least 13 COVID-19 cases and are reporting the Northwest region was in one of the uh, localities Mbengui in the center uh, Mbengui where she uh, took uh, the state of affairs in that part of the country as far as the virus gained COVID-19 is concerned her report. I only know say it's fine for wash your hands. Eh? People in the northwest region are aware of hand washing with soap and running water as a measure to limit the spread of the coronavirus. Anything we touch, I mean, go wash your hands. Eh? In a wing, one of the villages that make up Santa subdivision, hand washing before accessing the palace and other areas is a must. With less adaptive health infrastructures in many villages in the Northwest region, little respect of all measures put in place by governments and the World Health Organization, an outbreak of the coronavirus in these villages could be catastrophic. Health is very important. If you are not in good health, you cannot do anything. So that's why I've taken it very, very, very important. And that uh, we are afraid of this pandemic. The COVID-19. Mm -hmm. For these reasons and more, individuals and associations like the Ndongawin Cultural and Development Association is here at the Yawin Palace to launch the COVID-19 response mechanism for the Yawin community. To this regard, tax forces have been created to monitor transport and funerals, crowd pulling activities in the village. When uh, a, a, a situation like this uh, is facing the nation and, and our wing is not immune uh, from uh, being uh, infected, so we need to do everything to protect uh, the, the village. Uh, our, our theory is zero tolerance to anything uh, that will put the village at risk. That is why measures have been taken. You have to make sure that we do everything in line with WHO and national policies to prevent the spread. Strategies have been mapped out by the village head from Fozo II to ensure strict respect of these measures. Yeah, we have to use the traditional uh, whip so that uh, everybody should respect the regulations put in place by the traditional council and the non Cultural and Development Association. The Village Development Association also mounted billboards at the entrance into the village to further drive home the message on the need for prevention. 
Also, the community's health facilities have been provided 10 thermoflashes and face masks in thousands. ETV Simbu Stella reporting from Awin in the Santa Subdivision Northwest region of the Republic of Cameroon and political and civil society leaders have continued calling for special measures to be implemented in Anglophone Cameroon with regards to the unstable socio-political and security situation. Special measures including a ceasefire should be implemented in those regions to prevent a catastrophic situation that could erupt from the rising COVID-19 figures in those parts of the country. And from the northwest, we are taking you to the Senegal Maritime Division in the littoral region, where administrative authorities are also enhancing the fight against COVID-19 in that part of the country. Immaculate for with hands in details. Administrative authorities in the Senegal Maritime Division, littoral region of Cameroon, stepping up efforts in the fight against COVID-19. Though no COVID-19 case has been reported in the area, barring the way of an eventual case as what these local administrators are fighting for. The coronavirus is real, reason why we are carrying out the sensitization campaign. We want them to take this pandemic serious. While in the field, they are cautioning the population on the importance of respecting government anti-COVID-19 measures so as to prevent any further contamination. Streets and markets have been disinfected with demonstrations on how to wash hands carried out. This is the first uh, time we are having this concern here. Un dispositif sanctionateur pour celles des populations qui seraient récalcitrantes. Those found guilty of violating COVID-19 measures will be punished according to the law. From the Senegal Maritime Division to the Nyong and Kelly Division, uh, where we're going to be taking a look at the negative impact of COVID-19, the COVID-19 pandemic on business in that part of the country. And we have details in this report compiled by Smart Njikan Gebre. Special bike riders in Ezeka, in the Young and Kele division of the center region, still wave off government orders to put on protective face mask, even though it's now an obligation for all. It is in this light that the senior divisional officer for Young and Kele division, Peter Tiende, descended to the ground to sensitize these bike riders. One of mil we have over 1,200 bike riders in the town, but just a handful of you are here. It shows that you are not taking this situation very seriously, but Corona is real. Sure, it's not yet in Ezeka, but it kills. I decided to start with you because you are exposed and a risk factor to the population. Some bike riders in Ezeka say they feel uncomfortable with the protective face mask, while others say they lack the finance to purchase it. A good number of the bike riders have decided to protect themselves as well as their passengers, even though the protective face mask doesn't last long on their faces, which the senior divisional officer of Young and Kelly Division, Peter Tiende, frowns at. It's not to protect the neck, as I see most of you doing. The protective face mask is to protect your face and not to keep in your pocket, as I see most of you doing. A greater part of the population is already putting on the protective face mask in Ezeka, with some adding an additional decoration on it to attract others and at the same time sensitizing them to put on the protective face mask. 
And as I said earlier, at least 56 persons have been killed by the coronavirus in the Republic of Cameroon. One of the persons recently killed by the coronavirus is Alfred Fogwe Mbeng. He was the Director General of the National Shipyard and Industrial Engineering Company and Noni uh, Cameroon People's Democratic Movement CPDM Section President in the Northwest region of the country. He died over the weekend of COVID-19. We shall be paying tribute to Alfred Fogwe Beng in the second part of this uh, newscast. Now we go into the far north region of the country where authorities have launched a crackdown against clandestine health facilities. Several uh, such uh, health amenities have been shut down by administrative authorities in the far north region. Captain Marwa, details with for me, Armstrong Sander. Less than a week after the closure of 10 clandestine health establishments in Marwa 1 subdivision of the Diamaro Division, far north region of Cameroon, similar structures have been closed down in Marwa 3 subdivision. Closed down by administrative and health officials of the Diamaro Division and the far north region, the health structures either operate illegally or lack authorization to perform certain functions. Yeah, there are many health centers operating here without authorization from the ministry. Moreover, these health units do not forward necessary information to us as they should do. This includes the number of deaths and births recorded in their health units. Under what has been baptized as Operation Clean the Health Sector, the team led by the first assistant senior divisional officer for the Diamare Division, the final regional president of the Cameroon Medical Council, forces of law and order moved into the suburbs of Marwa Free Council where shocking discoveries were made. It is terrible and horrible. We discovered health units in very dirty states. Several of them are not in conformity, very dirty that paradoxically favors infections. The administrative officials say they choose to shut down the health establishment as a way to do justice to the local population. We saw health centers with nothing short of slaughterhouses. You see people involved in surgery, whereas they are not specialists. Moreover, surgery is not done in just any kind of health unit. We opted to close them down in order to save the local population. Promising hard times for clandestine health units across the division, the team called on owners of health units which have not been permanently closed to rectify their documents within the shortest time possible. Out of Cameroon, the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom says his uh, country is making significant progress in the fight against COVID-19. He spoke to the press shortly after officially resuming work following his uh, infection with the COVID-19. He is a survivor of the COVID-19. Take a listen. Good morning. I'm sorry I've been away from my desk for much longer than I would have liked. And I want to thank everybody who has stepped up, in particular the first Secretary of State, Dominic Ra, who's done a terrific job. But once again, I want to thank you, the people of this country, for the sheer grit and guts you've shown and are continuing to show every day. I know that this virus brings new sadness and mourning to households across the land. And it is still true that this is the biggest single challenge this country has faced okay. since the war. And I in no way minimize the continuing problems we face. And yet it is also true that we are making progress with fewer hospital admissions, fewer COVID patients in ICU and real signs now that we are passing through the peak. 
And thanks to your forbearance, your good, good sense, your altruism, your spirit of community, thanks to our collective national resolve, we are on the brink of achieving that first clear mission to prevent our National Health Service from being overwhelmed in a way that tragically we have seen elsewhere. And that is how and why, because I know there will be many people looking now at our apparent success. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson speaking day after recovering from COVID-19 infection. Now we are bringing to you these uh, disturbing and heartbreaking images of a mother of four who has been rendered homeless in Cameroon's political capital. Yaoundé, she has been forced out of her home by some authorities in the nation's political capital, Yaoundé. In 2003, she was delivered of four uh, babies and because the family was unable to uh, take care of the babies, they sent a distress calls to the president to the presidency of the republic and the first lady Chantal Bia came to their aid and uh, enabled them to have uh, a, a, an apartment in, a, in the locust houses in the city vet in the nation's political capital Yaoundé. and since then they have been uh, living there the widow and her four children have been uh, living there and uh, in 2014 the Chantal Bia Foundation uh, paid seven million francs CV of uh, rent and uh, stopped taking care of the uh, rent and there was um, an unpaid rent of over 700,000 francs CV which she was asked to pay and being unable to pay she has been uh, struggling to uh, maintain herself there to no avail and now she has been forcefully uh, kicked out of that house with an unpaid uh, amount of five million seven hundred thousand francs cfa being requested from her now she is a homeless in the nation's political capital yaoundé she is sending distress call once more to men and women of goodwill the presidency of the republic the first lady chantal bia the president of the republic paul bia to come to her rescue now we're talking about the consequences of the Anglophone crisis on developmental efforts in the northwest region of the country. Several developmental projects in the Dongamantum division have been either abandoned or poorly executed as a result of the unstable socio-political and security situation reigning in Anglophone Cameroon for close to four years today. For me, I'm Strong Sander. Meeting at the Nkambe Community Hall on Friday, April 23, 2020. The Donga Mantung Divisional Follow-up Committee for the Execution of Public Investment Project noted that several public projects awarded to the division since 2017 have not been executed for several reasons. At around 2018, His Excellency the Minister of Economy, Planning and Regional Development, awarded projects in Donga Mantu to the tune of about 6 billion francs. Principal contractors have only 6 billion. Abu Fast Enterprise, Jerry Sal, Zonta Solution. These three companies have, Abu Fast has about 3 billion worth of uh, jobs to be done here in Donga Mantu, which he started and because of the uh, situation which you know, all these jobs were suspended. So I'm praying Jerry Sal has come back uh, and started his job. Zunta Solution is back on the field. I am praying, calling on the management of Bufas, that Dunga Mountain is calm, the roads are open, so Bufas should come back to the field and complete his job. That way, we are going to mean Dunga Mountain is great again. Apart from the Ministry of Economic Planning and Regional Development, which gave about 6 billion, the Ministry of uh, Urban Development has jobs in uh, Dunga Mountain, which is close to about a billion francs. Then talk about the other sector. So we have a lot of jobs in Donga Mountain. So we are calling on all the contractors whose jobs were suspended to come back to Campbell in Donga Mountain and do their job. The environment is safe, the ASIO is here, the Eta Major, the security is, is good. So you can work in all the subdivisions in Donga Mountain. Accompanied by the senior divisional officer for the Donga Mountain Division, Dr. Doe Simon Quenty, 
the mayor of Nkambe, mini part officials and other members of the follow-up committee, the team made a round of some of these projects within the Nkambe Urban Center, noting that most of the enterprises are still nowhere to be found, even with relative calm raining in the area. The senior divisional officer for the Donga Mantung Division saluted the bravery, determination and steadfast of Jerry Sal, the only enterprise braving the storm to execute its project in Kambi. Uh, to appreciate the work which uh, is being done in Jerry this uh, urban center by Jerry Sal Enterprise, you will recall that uh, the populations of this uh, first and important division had as one of their priorities to the head of government, the prime minister, the root situation both in towns and in the rural milieu. But the state decided to tackle some of the major roots of our city. And this uh, company, Jerry Sagwon, and the, the insecurity we experienced in our neighborhoods did not permit the enterprise to ship into the division this uh, material, but uh, he has done everything within his possibility to bring, and that is why the work has started and it is going so uh, fluidly. To the management of Jerry Sal Kambe, love for community development is their push factor, as all has not been on the bed of roses. The difficulty you are facing is how to bring the material to uh, our division because we usually bring the material from Banso, but now we are bringing it from Bafusam. And now we have difficulties also in paying our uh, bills because we are just using our money. We have already uh, made uh, two comes for the government to bring, so we are waiting for them to pay us so that we can continue our job. But still, yet we are working, waiting for them. With Bovas and Zonta solutions yet to be seen back to the field, Jerry Sal is currently executing the towering of the CNPS, Nguayo Quarters, Nkambe Municipal Stadium, Finance Building and the Nkambe Divisional Office Stretch. The 2020 public investment project for Donga Mantung includes, among others, 22 projects from Nkambe. 4 for Ndu and 14 for Aku subdivision. Talking point is up next. Our first guest today is joining us from Cameroon's political capital, Yaoundi. A woman Mispa is the president of the women's wing of the Cameroon Renaissance Movement, CRM, political party. And she's also the Northwest regional head of that political party. You're welcome. Aum Mispa joining us from the nation's political capital and with her we're going to be talking about the evolution of COVID-19 notably in the northwest and southwest regions of the country where there have been a fears that uh, there could be an outbreak, an explosion as far as COVID-19 is concerned in those parts of the country if special measures are not implemented. Aum Mispa, good evening. Thank, thank you very much, mm. Mr. Babila. Mm. All right, you're welcome. I assume is the right pronunciation of that name. All right. Not thank Aum. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Okay, we begin in the northwest uh, region of the... It's uh, a privilege for me to be on Equinox this afternoon. Go ahead, go ahead, please. And uh, are you getting me? Is it okay? Yeah, go ahead, five on five. All right, thank you. So I would like to really extend... Uh, my condolence to the family of uh, Mr. Agwe Alfred and also the, the family of the Noni CPDM section president whom 
we just lost recently because of the COVID-19. Also greetings to my CRM family and to all the powerful Cameroonian women and all the young female politicians in Cameroon. Thank right. I was some uh, Miss Pa, Women's Wing President of the CRM political party. The COVID-19 figures are on the rise in Anglophone Cameroon, the northwest region, uh, speedily moving up from one to five cases over the weekend, and the southwest region already at uh, at least 13 uh, cases. And there have been calls for special measures to be implemented in those two uh, regions, but this is not yet happening. What's your take on this? Mr. Jonathan, uh, when we say special measures to be taken on that effect, it's, it's so funny because we see that our government is not really taking this COVID-19 pandemic as a serious business. Because if they, they do, we would not have the number which we are having today. This pandemic started in Cameroon without any case recorded in the Northwest and the Southwest. But today, as the news records, we are having up to five cases in the Northwest and 13 in the Southwest region. This is just to tell us that no matter the measures that are being put in place, it is not effective. It is not working towards the handling of that virus. And it's telling the government, if actually they have the ears to hear that, they have to do something much more better than what they are doing. Because the president-elect, Maurice Camto, outrightly, uh, Mr. Jonathan, stated some measures on which this thing is handled. But the government is giving a deaf ears to it, you know. It, you know the president-elect called for a kind of a lockdown. Is this we, government we, really cheap? Um, uh, I, I was so miss, but uh, I will... Um, it would be good for us to talk about because in Cameroon as of now we have the president of the Republic Paul Bia uh, and the president uh, the president elect I don't know maybe he's the president elect of the CRM political party but if you want to talk about Professor Maurice Camto you may just talk about him as the president of the CRM political party so now we are talking you are saying that government is not uh, serious about the management of COVID-19 all what government has been doing, all the, uh, the battery of over 13 uh, measures first, and then later on move up to 20, and more measures that have been taken so far, and the administrative authorities who are seen everywhere on the ground, the Minister of Public Health on the ground working. Why do you think that government is not serious? You know, every action that is positive brings in a positive result. If we still have negative results, it's a clear answer that the government is still being in serious. And we, we call the President Kanto the president-elect because Mr. Bia is unfounded, Mr. Jonathan. You yourself, you can bear with me that for over a month plus, we've been looking after Mr. Bia to address us, to console us like that father to tell us to speak. You know, when the father speaks to his children, it is more understood and more accepted by the children, you know. But everybody is just answering from left and right. Cameroonians have left on their own. Even the members of government, you see, they are just trying their own little best to show that they are still in power, but of which nothing is being done. That is why I say it here that the government is still doing nothing. No matter the 13 and up to 20 measures that have been taken, it's just a copy and paste method of which the other countries where these methods were copied, they actually studied this method and put all the supportive methods to it to make sure that it is being realized and to make sure that they achieve the required number with which they want to, to follow on the train or the pyramid as to recovery cases or to reduce of the COVID-19. All right. Um, 
What do you think about uh, the implementation of special measures in the northwest and southwest uh, regions of the country? There have been calls for a ceasefire uh, to be imposed there so that uh, you know, the COVID-19 can be stopped from spreading further into the hinterlands. Mr. Jonathan, special measures is not new to us. Seizing fire is not a special measure. This is what we've been asking for since from this government. It's just for them to execute it. We have been making propagandas. President Kanto has been making serious proposals over the years since the start of this crisis for the government to cease power. But the, the Minister of uh, Territorial Administration and other ministers, they interpret it in their own way. President Kanto has not said the, the government should, should, should carry their arms. And no, no, no. In times like this, they have to cease fire. When they cease fire, and we also call on the separatist fighters to put down their weapons. Because, and allow the normal police and gendarmes that normally governs. I was some uh, Ms. Pa, president of the... ...conducive atmosphere. Let's say, for example, Mr. Jonathan, if a separatist fighter, it's on both sides, it's on both sides. If a separatist fighter is being attacked now by the COVID-19, how will a medical doctor rush to, to him? That's a problem. That's why we tell even the separatist fighters, drop your weapons. It is time for us now. COVID-19 knows nobody. It's a friend to nobody. It attacks. It's not like... The, 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 the world that was declared on the Northwest and Southwest been by Mr. Bia that you will see weapons coming. COVID, you don't see it coming. It's a kind of a ghost man. You only see it after it has gotten grab of you and start manifesting. All right. So the, the, the president of the... The word special status or special measures. It's not special. It's not so special. It is what is supposed to be done. All right, the president of the CRM political party, Professor Maurice Camto, and uh, the other officials of the party uh, put in place uh, an initiative to raise funds for the fight against COVID-19. Uh, Cameroon Suvi Survival Initiative and the Minister of Territorial Administration said uh, that was illegal because your party didn't obtain authorization from his ministry as stated by the laws of the land. What has happened to this initiative? Thank you for that question, Mr. Babila. When we say laws, laws are made by man and can be regulated or can be changed in time of need or crisis by this same man. These laws are being put in place to govern man. And if a man finds himself in time of crisis danger, like we do presently, you and I and our other citizens, on the street, and the cases that have been recorded dead, Mr. Babla, you can go extra mile. There are laws that even bind us to do so. Cameroon should not forget that. We even have the, 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 the African Charter on the human and people's rights concerning crisis, danger times like this, where you even have the, 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 the Latinism that says the, the, the necessita obitum lua, the necessity of law. You, you know, during the time of necessity, you make laws that can, can, can suit the present context. And we should not forget to understand that whenever there is a crisis, you don't make decrees or orders or laws. You look for means, measures to suit the present context we are talking about, Mr. Babila. And you, the Cameroon government should also remember that these same laws they are talking about, it has its exceptions. We also have uh, uh, this, this section uh, 283 of, of, of our penal code, which is failure to assist. All of us, Mr. Babila, we have that liability to assist our fellow Cameroonian. And that's just what Mr. President-elect Professor Maurice Camto did. He's a, he's a profound uh, Cameroonian citizen who took up this legal, moral, and legitimate Republican action to call for donations. Yes, but but, but uh, I was some I was some I was some missed. But the the, the, the uh, 
I want to miss, but the question is, why did your party choose to go the illegal way? Why didn't you go to the Ministry of Territorial Administration to seek for authorization to go on with this activity? Mr. Babila, I told you, there is no illegality about the method in which we used in calling for Cameroonians to, to help themselves. There is no illegality about it. I've quoted you the, the, the fiction of the penal code that tells us about failure to assist. It is our code. Go to its section 283 of the Cameroon Penal Code. It's there. We also have the, the African Charter on Human and People's Rights that gives us the permission to go ahead in such an engagement. We studied this fact clearly and wisely before calling on, 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 on the Cameroonians. Mr. Babila, I want you to really answer me this question. Tell me if your house is a blaze is on fire and you you, you sit and wait for uh, Sape Pompe, the fire rescue team to come and quench the fire or you will be rushing to the DO to take an authorization or the neighbors will be rushing to the DO to take an authorization to come and quench the fire. No, they have to act. And there is nothing bad in the government coming and consolidating with this action that has been taken by our political party headed by Professor Maurice Camto. And if you look even at the beginning of this initiative, the, the Minat was being served. The Secretary General of uh, Gendarmerie was being served. The, the Secretary General of the Police Force was being served. The, 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 the National Order of Medical Doctors were being served. Other uh, administration, administrative authorities were being notified of this project. That's a, a, a little humility, and it shows so Republican. So there is no illegality about it, uh, Mr. Babila. If actually our government, they took upon themselves, as they said, they won the, the election, to govern the people the way they ought to govern, not to leave the Cameroonian people to die in their own laps. Then All right, uh, uh, last... last... That. Last question before we go uh, on something else. The uh, report of the inquiry commission uh, set up by the government on the Ngarbu incident in the far north in the northwest region of the country, uh, sorry, uh, the uh, president of your political party is saying that uh, there is need for an independent international investigation to reveal the whole truth. Why? Is it necessary for this commission to come from outside to come and investigate what has already been investigated by the government of the Republic? Oh, it's very important what the president said, Professor Maurice Camto, because there are a lot of things that have not been revealed. A lot of questions have not been answered, Mr. Babila. You and I, I even saw you, Mr. Babila, you were on the scene. Equinox TV was the only media that deployed one of its staff, and that was you I saw on the ground, to witness this thing live. Even when the bishop of of, 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 of Bui, he, he gave these statistics. But this same government, me and you, we are, they denied it, Mr. Babila. And something that we had about 22 to 23 cases down, we saw the mass barrier that took place, but the Minister of, uh, of Communication came and told us about five cases. You know, Mr. Babila, our country has been deceiving us. We've lost confidence in this government. So we found more pleasure in working with the international community that has more authority over other countries to investigate. Remember, during the last presidential election, 2018, they brought us forced invest surveillance. You know, these people, the government have always been taking Cameroonians to the bush. They have always been, been hiding the truth from Cameroonians. Even the statistics of this COVID is not being told. The truth is not being told. As to how many Cameroonians are infected, how many are dead, how many you know, Mr. Babila. So we feel more comfortable submitting this in the hands of the international community to still investigate because it is due to their pressure. The Human Rights Watch and, and the other organizations, redact, even our party, uh, the human rights officer, uh, barrister, uh, uh, they, 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 they fought for this, for the truth to be spoken. And the truth has squally come out. Like pregnancy never hides, Mr. Jonathan. This is the time. 
and we believe there are more truths to be told. They need to tell us how many houses were burnt. How many people were burnt in total number because they haven't told us the truth. Their last communicate told us it was five, which is not five. You and I, we know. Cameroonians, they know. They and the, 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 that in, the, the surviving family in the findings published by the in the findings published by the inquiry commission the figure uh, shifted from 5 to uh, 13 which is still uh, far below the figure uh, presented by the church by non governmental organizations national and international uh, civil society organizations awesome uh, miss pa president of the women's wing of the cameroon renaissance movement here in political party and northwest regional head of the party Thanks for joining us in this edition of Talking Point. Thank you very much, Mr. Babila. Coming up, as I told you earlier, we are paying tribute to Alfred Fogwe Beng, General Manager of the National Shipyard and Industrial Engineering Company, Chantier Naval. He was the CPDM Noni Section President in the Northwest region of the country. He died over the weekend of COVID-19. I want to tell you that, uh, Jonathan, the CBDM party is the only party that is deployed throughout the 365 council areas of this country. And this comes to tell you that this is a party which has the interests of the grassroots populations of this country at heart. We are not a party that is only looking for city dwellers. We are thinking about the hardships that Cameroonians are facing at the grassroots. And what concerns the Northwest province, the Northwest region, you remember that we are living the most difficult moments of our history in the Northwest at this time. But these campaign teams braved all the odds and thanks to security measures that were put in place by the, the, the government forces to ensure that all campaign teams, be they CPDM or even teams of the opposition parties were accompanied when they requested to be right. able to take their message down to the grassroots. I'm a little more concerned with some of the uh, remote and very difficult areas which you mentioned earlier. Uh, for example, Oku, the village of the former Prime Minister, Philemon Young. Did the campaign teams get to Oku? And of course. Uh, uh, how, how was it? There was no opposition? There was, uh, the way was free? Or there was uh, a kind of... Uh, pressure brought to bear on those who could have brought opposition by the presence, the heavy presence of uh, security and defense forces. Well, Jonathan, you, you do well to ask because that is my constituency. I come from that constituency as well. And I uh, can assure you that it was not all that very easy, but the population braved all the odds because they were reassured of the security measures that had been put in place. And when they finally came out, it was, I don't know if you, if you had, if you, you need to see the pictures. The population was out, the crowds were dancing to have that little freedom after more, almost three years of tension, of fear, of hiding. But today, we are proud to say that things are coming back gradually to normal. Some of, the, some of them certainly came out of the bushes. Definitely. For, for the first time. Definitely. After um, a long period of time. In fact, we want to applaud, we want to applaud the, uh, the, the spirit of the young, dynamic Cameroonians who, at the beginning of this crisis, though were misled, but later on found the path to come back. We saw example of this in Du, when Galajera descended on Du, we saw six young men who had ab who abandoned their guns and came back and apologized to the population and they were embraced, they were welcomed. To, to say that even those who are still in the bushes at this time, they have nothing to fear, they need just to accept the olive branch that is stretched out to them, to come out of the bushes and to meet their fellow Cameroonians so that at this moment, which is a defining moment in our country, where we are laying the foundation for a new Cameroon, that they should also be part of what is happening. When the people saw uh, the CPDM campaign team, the CPDM uh, candidates, legislative and municipal, coming to them at this point in time, after over three years of uh, 
atrocities, three years of killings, burning down of entire villages. What was their reaction? Were they receptive? Yes, Jonathan, you must realize that all those atrocities are getting behind us now. And we are saying that this is not the time to judge people. This is not the time for the blame game. Because we know the atrocities have been across the board. You have had people suffering from the atrocious acts of the, the, the fighters, the secessionist fighters who are in the bushes. You have also had cases where the military were forced to react with brutal force when, the, when it was necessary in cases of insecurity posed by these armed fighters. And this, the civilians, the innocent civilians were caught in the crossfires. But at this time, people are beginning to see reality, to recognize that Cameroon is making a decisive turn where policy is being moved surely to the grassroots where decisions are going to be taken at the grassroots, where local governance becomes preeminent. Some of the people who went into the bushes did so because they felt that there was over-centralization in the management of state affairs. But we told them that even though government machinery moves sometimes slowly, but this demonstrates to us that it moves surely. With the passage of the uh, recent code of decentralization, which gives a special status to the Northwest and Southwest regions. We, that is the main message we took out to the militants, to the populations on the ground, to, to remind them that in the same way that we of the Northwest moved out of the Eastern House in Enugu, that was in the days when we were still with Nigeria, and the same way that we of the Northwest region voted massively and positively for reunification in 1961. It's in the same way today that we of the Northwest region must vote massively to make sure that the special status becomes a reality. This can only work, Jonathan, if these councillors are voted and they get into office in order to also vote the regional councillors who will put now into place our regional assembly, failing which we will not obtain what we have been looking for, which has been local governance. And the opportunity has been given us through this. And we're insisting that the best partner of the population to lead us into this new Cameroon, this new Cameroon is the CBDM party and no one else. That's why we are calling on all the, the masses of the Northwest region, whether they are CPD militants or not, for the good of our region. We are asking that they should vote the CPDM lists at these council elections. But many, many, uh, um, many are not very convinced with this um, uh, message uh, of uh, you know, spatial status, decentralization, uh, and all of that. The, that. the message that you carry to the people, many Anglophones seem to be uh, very skeptical and they are just thinking that this whole thing is not going to change anything. This whole thing is going to be uh, another phase of what was qualified in the President Paul B. speech during the recent Paris Peace Forum as an attempt of assimilation, that this is going to be another phase. How did you manage to convince the people? Well, were, were, were they uh, uh, sure about what you were saying? Were they uh, convinced that Jonathan, what you're saying now is going to work? You saw the images. You saw the populations that came out in the southwest region. You saw the people that came out in Mutengene, those who came out in Limbe, those who came out in Boya to receive the prime minister, Chief Dr. Dion Gute, who came with the same message came with the same message to the populations of the Southwest region to call on them to vote right. That means to give our future a chance. And if, that, if, if the population of the Southwest region did not believe or did not buy the message which was brought by the Prime Minister, you would not have seen the crowds that you saw. Similarly, when you watch the campaigns on the ground in the Northwest region, 
if you see the crowds that came out in Du, which has been a stronghold of the of, of the fighters, if you saw the crowds that came out in Kambe, the, the crowds that came out in Tabiken, the crowds that came out in Misaje, the crowds that came out in Elak Oku, just to name these ones, even the, the crowds that came out in Santa, Jonathan, what else do you want? This is a plebiscite of the message we took out because it shows that the population, despite the, the security risks, were willing to take a chance to come out to receive the message and to declare that, yes, they are ready for the change at this time. The declaration is what I'm more concerned about because coming out to listen is one thing and then what they are saying, what they were saying to the campaigners of the CPDM, to the candidates, to the officials of the party is another thing. What were they saying when, you, when, when they heard you people talking about all these uh, special status, decentralization, uh, return to peace and normalcy, uh, development and so on? What were they saying? Jonathan, you know that not everybody can sing the same song. But what I'm telling you is that by a wide majority, those who came out bought the message. You saw them dancing. You didn't need to do a vox pop to ask every single person of those 3,000 uh, militants that came out in Tabiken. Did you expect to, 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 to do a vox pop and speak to 3,000 people? Everybody the only way, of course, those the, who, the, those the, the message, the response to me was in the joy, in the dancing, in the singing. That spoke for itself. Even though it's true, some that sort there of are, a sign of hope. There are, there are, it's true that there were some. There, there must be some dissenting voices here and there, but that is to be expected in a human society. But by and large, we are talking here about democracy, and democracy is a game of numbers. By the numbers I saw, I'm convinced that the message passed, and I am sure that on Sunday, the what was said through dance and song will be concretized through, it, through the ballot box. And for this reason, I want to take this opportunity again to call on all the populations of the Northwest region. On Sunday, 9th February, when they go out there, this is the ballot paper that will decide the future of the Northwest region in the new Cameroon. Vote the CPDM means you are voting for peace. Alfred Fogwe Beng, Director General of the National Shipyard and Industrial Engineering uh, Company before his death, and of course, uh, Noni CPDM, Section President in the Northwest Region of Cameroon, was my guest on the 7th of February 2020, proud to the 9th of February municipal and legislative elections in the Republic of Cameroon. Today, he's no more. He's one of the 56 dead victims of the COVID-19 in Cameroon. He died over the weekend. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for staying with us. Goodbye.